Welcome to the Business of Design podcast. I'm Cheryl Horn, Director of Operations for Business of Design. A lot has changed at Business of Design since this episode originally aired. For the latest information and rates on events and membership at Business of Design, head to businessofdesign.com. Enjoy the show. Hello, hello, Business of Design. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Kimberly Selden. I'm an interior design professional just like you. And yeah, I'm feeling what you're feeling. I'm feeling what we're all feeling. And uh, this is one of the only sane things in my life right now, having this connection with all of you. So thank you so much for being here. This is a Business of Design Business Alert, episode 159 for March 26th, 2020. And we have an amazing guest on today's show, Business of Design member Alexa Ralph. I can't wait for you to meet this wise and busy interior design professional. There is no question in my mind that AHR Designs and Alexa Ralph will survive whatever life is about to throw at her business. She's got the right attitude, and she has the systems and procedures she needs already in place. Still, like me, Alexa is committed to fine-tuning the processes she already has in place. There's really not going to be a better time for you to do this. For those of you all over the world who have been telling us for the past 15 years that you really just don't have time to work on your business, look again. I know many of you now wish you had made time previously. We are getting emails daily from people who are in very challenging situations, and we will do our best to coach you through this, but there's no more looking back. It's time for each of us to look ahead. There are possibilities in front of you. On Monday and Wednesday's webinars, I discussed the one decision you need to make right now, and that is whether or not you are going to survive. Making that decision is critically important. Are you going to survive and emerge as you are now, only stronger? Are you going to survive and pivot? Have you been imagining something a little bit different for yourself, but didn't quite have the time or courage to make that leap? If you decide you're going to survive, then you are in the right place. We are going to do this together. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Selden. Business of Design is the coaching community for independent designers like you. We know it takes more than hard work and talent to successfully run a professional design firm. There are proven business strategies that can solve your immediate challenges and transform your life. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to more than 100 video courses, participate in monthly coaching calls, and find unlimited support within our exclusive members-only Facebook group. Unlike traditional coaching, BOD is a fast track to immediate results. For independent interior designers, decorators, architects, stagers, and landscapers just like you. Monthly membership is only $79. Annual members save two months. What are you waiting for? We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. Announcements. I know you're missing Cheryl. I miss her too. She's so much better at announcements than I am. She's got her hands full, as you can imagine, with two young ones at home. So she'll be back on the podcast Monday if everything goes according to plan. So please put up with me for the short term. Let's talk about Business of Design Bootcamp. Do you want to make the next 10 years the most profitable of your entire career? Do you want to make your clients happier than ever before? Do you want to feel deeply satisfied right down to your toes? Then you should be part of this. This is a series of five webinars held on each Thursday in April. April 2nd to April 30th. You will receive homework prior to the webinar and you are expected to do that homework prior to the webinar. Members, this is free. We have raised the limit to capacity now of 500. So there's space for every single one of you who wants to participate. We want to assist you with your goal of getting your business in the best shape it's ever been in. 
For some of you, you haven't gone through Business of Design's 15-step project management strategy yet, so this will be some new information. For others, you've gone through it maybe more than once, but you're ready to double down, recommit, and as I said, get yourself and your business in the best shape possible to succeed in the future. The future is going to be rosy again. Let's don't squander this opportunity to commit to processes. And that's what Alexa is going to talk about on the show today. So sign up. Again, it's free. Business of Design Bootcamp Series for members. Also for members, we are launching a second Business of Design Group coaching call to accommodate our members in Australia. It will be held on April 2nd at 10 p.m. EST, which is equivalent to April 3rd, 1 p.m. AEDT, Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Everyone is welcome, BYOB, or in my case, BYOT. If you are not yet a member, we are not going to forget about you. Business of Design is committed to this industry, to you as individuals. Watch your inbox and listen to the podcast for more announcements on free events. This week, Business of Design rolled out two free events. The first on Monday was a Business of Design Business Alert webinar. This was open to anyone in the industry, anyone who wanted to join We had a cap of 100 people and it filled up in 24 hours. So we have now raised our cap. So again, anybody can participate in our next Business of Design Business Alert webinar. Monday's webinar focused on the first of five phases Business of Design is rolling out as a recovery program. The first phase, Survive is what we talked about on Monday. And that recording is available now for anyone who wants a trusted business advisor and a deep resource to help you through the challenging weeks and months ahead. Yesterday, on Wednesday, we had a Business of Design group coaching call, and that recording is also live and available now for members. As well, there is a template of the email I sent to clients, and you're welcome to download that and use it. We announced in both of those webinars that Business of Design has a five-phase recovery program. Allow us, if you will, to set a pace for you that makes sense. This is a marathon, it's not a sprint, and there will be a temptation to act immediately, and oftentimes that's a mistake. All of us right now are in the middle of a crisis. A recession is what follows, and that means there is time for you to take a measured, field-tested approach. We can ride the wave and we can come out stronger than ever before. A knee-jerk reaction rarely produces the best results. So Business of Design will roll out a five-phase recovery program based on strategies that I have used personally to survive the previous recessions. And I have zero fear this time I will survive this one. I finally got it. I didn't feel that way with the last three, by the way, but I am 100% confident I got this. And you can too. Business of Design five-phase recovery program will be a series of webinars and group coaching calls, and all of it will be free. Finally, episode 160, Business of Design Business Alert, is going to feature one of my clients, someone I really have come to admire and respect, and I knew I could ask her opinion about how it might feel as a client to be approached for new business during these challenging days. She has amazing advice for all of us. That will air on Monday, episode 160, Marika Manalitas. Thank you so much for participating in the podcast. And now, lucky you, you are going to meet Alexa Ralph. Alexa returned to school when her daughter, who is now 14, was only four years old. She finished design school and in her words accidentally started a business, AHR Designs. She's officially been in business since 2012. In late 2018, uh, she happened to be at High Point and heard me speak on a panel. 
ooh, and I think we're going to gossip a little bit about that. That was a very strange, very strange moment for me, and it impacted Alexa as well. Nonetheless, she heard something that day, and she says she had an awakening that led to her revamping her business, and she says she's been preaching the gospel ever since. Business of design has completely changed how I do business and how profitable I am. AHR specializes in high-end residential design for busy families. Alexa believes, and who could argue with this, that a home should reflect and at its core feel like the people who live there. She loves making this magic happen for our clients. Alexa, thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed this morning. How are you? You know, I am holding up in these crazy times. <laughs> um, it's it's amazing how quickly things have changed just in the past couple of weeks. We went from getting ready to go on spring break and winding things down in the office to <laughs> approaching a new normal for the whole planet, really. So yeah, absolutely. It's been interesting. What? Where are you <laughs> and how many little ones do you have? Um, I am in Baltimore, Maryland, in, uh, Baltimore County, Maryland, and I have two teenagers. So uh, a 15-year-old and an almost 14-year-old. <laughs> so they're not little. <clears throat> Right. They can un- unload a dishwasher and learn how to scrub a toilet and uh, do their coursework <laughs> and remote learn and, you know, and sulk and be moody and all that good stuff. Right. I, I would trade it. I know a lot of people stuck home with toddlers and school age kids who need so much support. And I just feel for the working moms out there right now because it's it's really, 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 really hard. It's <laughs> I remember those really days. hard. Yeah. Yeah. It is really, really hard. And I'm going to shout out for the moms whose children are grown because it's really hard. Mm-hmm. Our kids are isolating without us. And so it's constantly checking in, FaceTiming, Zoom calling, you know, mom, I'm good, back off. And you, you're just worried about them all the time. So I'm, I don't know that there's a perfect mm-hmm. situation, but I certainly envy anybody who's got their children under one roof. Oh, interesting. That's a great perspective, actually. Well, I've I've seen a lot of people post things about how this is a wonderful opportunity. You know, I will say the only, I mean, I shouldn't say the only silver lining, but one of the silver linings that I've really (laughs) recognized in myself is even though the anxiety of the situation has me holding my breath often, I don't feel the normal chaos of the multitasking, juggling, running around piece of it. Like I was always in my car and not answering a call and right. Like there's, there's something about this sort of sheltering in place (laughs) that grounds us. Right. So I'm, I'm sort of finding that new, that new exhale that I didn't really know, or maybe couldn't remember. So interesting on Monday's podcast, I am interviewing a client of mine uh, who said the same thing. Like there is kind of a beauty in not having to be in the car and driving people to soccer practice, et cetera. I think we will all be changed uh, permanently. I really do. I think it'll go back to beautiful, happy times for sure, but these lessons will not be forgotten. Yeah. So it'll, we are, we are headed into some new normal, as you say. So Alexa, thank you so much. Yes. You started a snowball at, uh, on business of designs, Facebook community page, um, with a, with a post and I don't know if you had any idea of what you had started, but it was so beautiful. It's kind of what we wanted to say, but Aww. thought it seemed mercenary or self-serving. And then you said it and it was like, mm. oh my gosh. So can I read yeah. that to everybody? You may, of course. Okay. Alexa Harris Ralph says, few thoughts to share during this time of hunkering down and social distancing. Personally, I never have time to work on my business. This seems the perfect time to schedule a few hours a day to identify some of the things I need to change, revise, and implement or learn. I plan on re-listening to Business of Design's 15-step project management strategy. Check in on your past and present clients. Lots of people are at home staring at their walls and future projects in their homes. Maybe remind them of your services or of a few things you tabled previously that they might be up for thinking about again. 
post pictures of dream home workspaces on your social media. Remind people that you do FaceTime consults. I'm doing an install next week via FaceTime, which I got to ask about that. And then just a few things to consider as we all navigate the next few weeks, we are all stronger as a community together. Like, what an amazing attitude, guys. If you have people (laughs) in your circle of support with an attitude like that, you will be one of the people who survives this. Not to be too dramatic about it, right? But you better have that attitude. So good for you. Well, I I mean, and I credit a lot of that with you, Kimberly, because when... So, you know, just to backtrack... uh, I guess it'll be two years ago this fall, my friend Heather and I discovered you at High Point at one of the panels. And that Christmas break, you know, when you had that time between Christmas and New Year's, which I've equated to what this feels like, right? You don't know what day it is, your jeans don't fit, all that kind of stuff. Um, we sort of text each other and Heather said, remember that woman? I said, remember that woman we we saw at High Point? You know, I just I just listened to one of her podcasts. I think, I think she's onto something here. Because you were kind of in a group with... I don't know if you remember. Oh, it was the guy who his business. Home polish. You actually, I just about yes, home polish. I had to sit on my hands not to just stand up and scream. Like, what are they doing on the and stage? And knowing you now, I can feel it. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. I was, I was palpitating. <laughs> At one point, he turned to me. He literally said, "You shouldn't have to worry about the paperwork." And I thought I was going to lose my mind right there. Well, and it's interesting too, because I, I wasn't, I, I think you probably held back on what you, what you, what you believe and what you teach. And so we left that, we left that panel being like, Hmm, these are sort of interesting things, but I started following you because I just, you know, whatever marketing and seeing, you know, building my world after high point every year, you know, I sort of try to follow, follow more people and be friend with the reps and all that stuff. So, you know, from that point on, I had a paradigm shift in ter- in terms of, we are a community. We can support each other. We need to build these little hives and pods of, of people locally. Um, I've done that here in Baltimore. You know, we have a little group that meets once a month and a rep will come speak with us or we can bounce ideas. Up. We don't have a water cooler, right? So you provided this global water cooler of sorts for designers. And I think that some of us need to kind of take that into our communities and just, you know, be leaders. And, and, and I, you know, people with little kids might not be the ones who are going to lead the group, <laughs> but, you know, people like me with older kids to have a little more time on their hands. It is sort of nice to facilitate that and to, um, cause I do, I really, really, really truly believe, like I said on that Facebook post that we are stronger together. Yes. I couldn't agree more. Let's focus on some of the beautiful things you posted on Business of Design's Facebook page. For instance, how are you going to carve out time to meet this important goal and honor this decision to work on your business? Well, you know, it's interesting. I I was actually looking at, I I always keep a little, so I I keep a, a journal I'm, like I said, I'm not really techy. I don't keep a, an electronic calendar. I keep like a an old school book, um, and I always have an area that you know things things to do in the office, right? So things to help help with the business. And I've had like an ongoing list for eight months of things to do. And one of them was to re-listen to the steps, which I was so happy when you offered that boot camp because <laughs> I that was the first thing I did. I just signed up for the boot camp. I'm like, you know what? It's scheduled. I don't even have to put it on the schedule. It's already scheduled. I'm going to listen, you know, starting, what is it, April 3rd? A- April 2nd, uh, five Thursdays in a row. And then you'll get the homework list on March 30th. Yeah. So we've kind of taken the I mean, everyone needs homework. stress out of it. Yeah. Everybody's going to do homework. Like this is serious. Let's don't squander this time because the reality is this is going to end guys. And we're all going to be, this reminds yep. me of being an actor. You know, you're, you're in between plays or you're in between roles and you're like, oh, I'm never going to work again. I'm such a loser. What am I going to do? Boom. I got a job. And then you go, oh my gosh, I don't have time to do anything. Like why? I can't do yoga. I can't go to the store. Yeah. Like, so let's, yeah. let's don't squander yeah. this time. Let's like full speed ahead. You're going to be in the best shape of your life. And I said this on the webinar on Monday, my most profitable decade followed the last recession. I made more following the last recession than I did in all my years Mm -hmm. combined. That's a lot of money, right? Like that's amazing. That's the shape you're going to be into. Well, one of the things too, and and it's funny, I have an acting background as well. And I used to, every time I was, I did a lot of voiceovers and commercials and every time I was on set or in the booth, (laughs) 
I would say, this is the last job I'm ever going to have. Right? <laughs> there was just something about it that I always felt like this was the last job I was, I was ever going to have. And I think, you know, someone, one of my designer friends here said, you know, you're always so positive. I said, you don't understand. I was in a business where 76 out of 77 times someone said no. Right. Now I'm in a business where like, one out of every 25, someone might say no, <laughs> right? Like the, the parent, it's so, it shifted so much that that doesn't even phase me because mm-hmm. I, I never expected to get the job, right? <laughs> now it's like, I always expect to get the job. And if I don't, eh, it's fine, right? Right, so, <laughs> so true, so true. So you're going to take this time and recommit to process. I, I am running into, and maybe you can coach me on this. I We meet a lot of members who have <laughs> modified things to various degrees. And then I will get a call. They will book a one hour coaching call and they'll say, I'm in trouble. This thing happened. And I'll say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. How did that happen? If you're following the, uh, our 15 step process, well, I decided I would make this one change. And I'm like, that one change <laughs> opened a hole where all this chaos got in. Andor. So have you discovered mm. anything like that? Are you aware of any gaps that you need to fill at this time? And how do I coach those people? Like, can I just shake them? I mean, it's like, what are the, I don't know what the adage is, but like, it works if you, if you work it, right? Is that like an AA thing or yeah. something? You know, so... I will say I have, there's a couple tweaks. I have like a little extra step that I do that you, that you don't necessarily teach that just works for me. Um, and then there's a couple things that I do run into every once in a while where, where I'll say, hmm, if I did it by the rules, I probably wouldn't be feeling this way. But they're never things for me, at least at this point, that are detrimental to my well-being, my financial outcome. It, it just might be like, oh, that took an extra hour and it shouldn't have, right? right. Or something. Um, or it... You know, if it ends in an unhappy client, that's a big problem. Yeah. Right. Because one of the things that I, you know, and I think I mentioned this, we're all sitting here, you you have an arsenal, you have a file of, of clients that have hopefully are happy with you and your work that you can, in theory, reach back out to at these times, or they're reaching back out to you. I've had a couple of people who are, you know, sitting in their homes now, busy people, lawyers and um, corporate people who can actually work from home <laughs> and now are home and are staring at these walls and are saying, Oh, I remember Alexa said I should get something for the, you know, we should do a photo wall here. Or I remember there was this great piece of furniture, but I didn't want to spend it at the time. And you know what? That's what I need right now. That'll make me happy. I've had a lot of that sort of reaching out at this time where normally I can't get them to return an email. Right. They're so busy. Right. So I truly yeah. believe there was never a time where home was more important than right now. So if you are in the interior design industry, yes, it is going to be rough for a little bit. And then you are going to have an opportunity to create finally the business of your dreams, really and truly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a good friend who's in PR. Um, she does a lot of like high-end luxury brands and they have an, an entire home division. And in the past two weeks, they've lost you know 50% of their clients but the only clients who haven't even called or complained are the home brands. So something to keep in mind, you know, window covering companies, a lot of these, my, all my carpet guys are still working because they're, I guess, considered an essential business. The construction guys, they're still working. You know, there's a lot that's still going on. You know, if there's one contractor in your house, you know, depending on your comfort level and the, you know, the state of health in your house and who you're seeing and how you're quarantining and taking your social distancing, I think that there is some, there are things that can happen during this time that, you know, the, the player can still get moved forward <laughs> in the project. Yeah. Um, and we're going to so. talk about some of the, the things to look out for, um, such as purchasing uh, items from a supplier and then finding out later the supplier's going under. So we're going to we're going to cover that mm-hmm. on some upcoming calls as well. Tell me about your FaceTime install. What what on earth was that like? Well, so it's interesting. I have so I I definitely I work across a couple states. So sort of from Virginia to New York, um, just because of where I came from and where I live now and where my contacts are. Um, and I actually do believe you can kind of work anywhere really, but, um, with your processes, (laughs) um, but I had a couple of outstanding deliveries that, you know, in an ideal world, the entire room would be installed, but now I have people who now might be facing being home for a month or two months or hopefully God forbid (laughs) three months. Um, and so when, when New Jersey, for example, last week, 
people were getting the feeling that New Jersey was going to be closing down all non-essential businesses. I called my A team receiver and I said, listen, what do you have for my client? Tell me what's in, tell me what's there. Tell me when Michelle Johnson's coming. Are they coming tomorrow? Whatever they have on that truck, let's get that to the client on Thursday. I know it's not the whole room. And I emailed the client. I said, will you be comfortable with this? She said, absolutely. And actually, so it was two head dining chairs, a coffee table, um, and a chair for their library. So, you know, these weren't things that, you know, the rug needed to be placed in a certain place that I needed to be on site for. These were things that, you know, based off my little, the drawing that they had in their binder, they, they could figure out where the chair was going to go. Um, but it was sweet. And we had, you know, we had interaction. She knew I was on it. I gave her a heads up when they were on their way, you know, um, and they were home and it was nice to say hi. And it was a point of connection that she knew I was, I was still working for her. She was happy. She's happy to have her chairs, right? <laughs> so that's um, lovely. A great place to put a drink down now while she's sitting in her living room. You know, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's things we don't have the end tables and we don't have the lamp, but it, it is what it is at this point, right? Right. Um, and so- you demonstrated flexibility in the face of you know unfolding madness. So I think that's beautiful, and mm-hmm. um, and the fact that you could coach your client through that. This isn't how we like to do it. But given the circumstances, I think you might appreciate having these beautiful things in your home right now. So I love, that's really beautiful. That's exactly. Everybody should think about, do you have anything like that? And it's wonderful to keep anybody employed right now. If you have the means to keep your receiving company and movers employed, provided it's safe to do so. And that's, that's a really hard call for me right now. I'm not sure what's safe in mm-hmm. any given circumstance. So... Uh, but that's beautiful. I love that you did that. Well, one thing also with the receivers, um, cause I have a delivery in, uh, Maryland tomorrow actually. And I asked for the same, they had a, they had a delivery about a week and a half ago, um, of, of some, you know, they had took a bulk of their stuff and now tomorrow they're getting the second bulk of their stuff. And I asked for the same two guys, because again, you know, it's about exposure and how, how small we're keeping our world. So they do have a lot of teams, but I said, listen, let's send the same two guys. Let's make sure those same two guys are the guys touching their furniture because they've been in this client's house. That reduces the risk on the delivery guys and it reduces the risk on my clients and sort of, you know, it helps, I think, you know, based on what Fauci says, <laughs> keeping yeah. our worlds kind of compressed and small at this point. So, right. What are you looking forward to? I can tell already that you have decided you're going to get through this crisis. You're going to survive. Your business is going to survive. What is on the road ahead for you in terms of your business? Mm, That's a good question. Um, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, I'm actually really looking forward to the boot camp because it was like a, a kick in the butt <laughs> and a force in my chair to sit down for this next month and sort of um, refresh and revise the things that I may have forgotten the details on. Um, I think being able to focus without distraction on some of the things that I do do in my office on a regular basis. So, you know, even when I'm preparing for a client presentation to really sit down and say, okay, let's, let me do a, let me do a Skype call with one of my reps. Cause I'm actually missing a fabric here. I I keep some things on file. I do have some books in my office. I, you know, as we all do, we probably have a you know, good visual memory of the things like, oh, I remember that wallpaper. Whose wallpaper was that? You know, calling my design center and saying, hey, can you guys send me any wallpaper that has a wave? You know, I'm working on this beach house and I, I'm looking for something. And, and, you know, just sort of calling on our resources to and realizing that the, everyone's in this together. Um, I did a, a, a FaceTime call with my Schumacher rep the other day and saw the new line. And that was exciting. And it kind of felt, you know, keeping us a part of the world while we're sort of reinventing how this is all going to work out. And, you know, some of these things might be able to be carried on even when we can leave our homes, right? Like there is something very efficient about sitting at your desk and seeing the new line. You might not be able to touch, see, and feel it, but she was holding up, you know, beautiful fabrics and embroideries and things for me, just like I'm talking to you on the computer. (laughs) And I got a sense of it. And you know what? The memos will be here, here by Friday. So Um, you know, maybe saving a little carbon emissions on the way, right? 
I'm excited about those kinds of changes as well. Efficiencies matter in terms of being profitable. And Mm. I also think it's a great time. You know, we've spent some time so far talking about reconnect with clients, but you raise a really good point. Reconnect with your suppliers. They're scared too, some of them, especially those small Mm -hmm. mom and pop shops. They're worried about where their next job is going to come from. So now's a really good time to get on the to get on Skype or FaceTime with them and tell them that you want to be someone who helps them get through this and how can you work together. Mm-hmm. This this yeah, will bring absolutely. out the best in most people. That's the truth. It will bring out the best Correct. in most people and then it will bring out the yeah. opportunists. And, you know, that it comes full circle to that conversation at High Point. And one of the things that came out of being on that panel was a decision that I won't be on, pa- on panels anymore unless we're going to pick the people because... I found that panel to be very troubling. The information that was being given out to our industry on that panel was dangerous and bad. And because I had been invited by the group that organized that panel to speak, I didn't feel that I could come right out and say that directly. Um, I tried to do some dog whistles, but um, that left me feeling like I didn't serve my community very well during that situation. I wish now I had said, wait a minute, I would just want to time out here. Everybody, don't do it. This is a very bad idea. But but that Home Polish was right. a sponsor of the organization that put them on the stage. So how does that happen? How do you have a sponsor mm-hmm. who's so clearly not in integrity around our industry? How on earth do you take money from that company? I don't know. It was super confusing as an audience member, like super confusing. And I remember leaving being like, I would never do that. <laughs> and I, at that point too, I didn't even know what I know now. Right. So my instinct, our instincts were on. And I think the whole audience was sort of like, Hmm. And I could sense, I could sense that you wanted to say something, but you couldn't. And, and now that now I'm knowing you from, you know, knowing you from listening to you for all these, you know, a year and a half or whatever, it, it, it totally makes sense. But yeah. At the time, it was definitely very, very odd. Anyway, so no more panels for me unless I know who's on them, unless I'm on the panels with Business of Design members, and then good to go. The advice is solid. And then, you know, I will also say, everybody, this is a time to choose your tribe very carefully. You're going to get a lot of mixed messages. Find a lane, stay in it, and put your blinders on. Don't listen to a lot of the advice out there. It's bad you know, choose those people who are in it to win it. Those people who are running successful interior design businesses like Alexa Ralph, listen to them. That's, that's where you get your, your wisdom and your guidance and ignore the noise. Well, it was interesting. I was speaking to that same friend, Heather, and she's got three little ones and, you know, it's basically homeschool mom right now in Connecticut. And she said, you know, I don't know, should I go back to doing it for a a while? She was doing sort of like design in a box, you know, send people ideas and whatever. And I said, Heather, no, (laughs) I said, if you can afford it, just look at your bottom line, take an exhale, take four weeks, (laughs) get through this, and come back and do what you were doing because you were doing it beautifully. It's just that she didn't have people in the pipeline right this second. So it's hard, you know, it's hard to get the project of the year during this time. Do I think you're going to get your project of the year right now from your from your desk? Probably not because that that takes some cultivating and some time. Are you going to, can you call on the people though who are your client base and say, hey, think, let's think about what's next or, you know, start planting a seed for what's next so that when we can come out of our homes, <laughs> you're ready to go. Um, you know, but not to, not to start doing something new that you never did before and certainly not at a discount. And that's one of the things I remember you saying about that you actually raised your rates after the recession the last time. Right. Yeah. Right? I, I, I remember speaking at a group in Dallas, Texas, and Dallas is a fairly affluent city. My friends in Dallas are, are quite wealthy. I was shocked that in a group of about 100 people, they all thought it was a great idea to lower their rates. And most of them had already lowered their rates. And it was disastrous. It proved to be a really bad choice. And of course, the excuses we use to lower our rates, well, people can't afford things right now, so I'll lower my rate. There's so much competition here, so I'll lower my rate. I'm the only person in this rural county who does this, so I'll lower my rate. Like, None of them is justified. A bad business decision in good times is a bad business decision in bad times. So Mm -hmm. I'm so happy you said that. Amen, sister. It's funny because someone said, oh, you know, I had a client and they they had earmarked a bunch of money for this project and now the market was down. And I said, you know what, give them two or three weeks. 
I think that the one thing I would say, we all want to be cautious and diplomatic about our approach to asking for new work right now. I, I'm not convinced it's a good time to ask for work. I, I personally do not feel comfortable asking anyone for work right now. The only communications I'm having with clients, well, I'm talking about clients who I currently do not have a project with. Uh, clients I currently do not have a project mm-hmm. with, all I'm doing is, how are you? How are the kids? Where are they isolating? Do you guys need groceries or supplies? We're headed to the grocery store. Can we pick anything up for you? Those are the only communications I'm having with those clients now. It's different if you have a client as you have, Alexa, um, and we have as well, where the project's already in the middle. Then it's a different kind of a conversation. But certainly, I'm giving my clients permission to put the brakes on everything right now. Because even wealthy clients, like one of my clients I spoke to the other day, they have a huge company. They're going to lay off 50% of their staff. They're not thinking about decorating right now. They're thinking about the human damage they're about to unleash. And it's, it's very, very painful for them. So, you know, all I'm doing with them is saying, I'm so sorry. I'm here for you let me know if we can help and we're going to get right. through this kind of thing. So right. just be careful, you know, neediness is repulsive, you know, be, be really careful right. about totally. that. Totally. Right. Yeah. No, I was thinking too, that, um, you know, for people who aren't using your processes and haven't received a hundred percent payment in advance, I'm think about in like a time of crisis now, the idea that someone could walk away, right? I mean, the, the things that are ordered are paid for and they will get, your clients will get. But if you weren't practicing <laughs> business of design practices and, you know, you placed an order and you hadn't received payment yet or you only had 50% or, right, and you're not covered, you're sitting and sweating at your desk at this point, oh, right? Yeah. So just, again, how to really tighten up those processes because we shouldn't be putting ourselves in those positions in good times, never mind a global pandemic, <laughs> No, man, oh man, you're so right. I I feel like if I'm really being honest, I just want to shake some people because they know better. And I've been preaching this message Mm -hmm. since 2004. Do not allow yourself to be vulnerable because when things go wrong, they go wrong fast. I didn't anticipate this as being the thing that could go wrong, but it doesn't matter, right? Anytime you allow yourself to be a bank for clients and put yourself in a position of vulnerability, it is a huge mistake. So what I hope is this will be the last time you have to hear that message before you take the steps you need to take to protect yourself. You owe it to the community to be successful. You owe it to your family, to your friends, to your clients. I completely 100% agree. Well, you are invited back on the podcast at any point. You are a fantastic <laughs> guest with really practical information. And it just it just highlights for me, I will listen all day to a mature interior design business owner, not age, by the way. I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about someone who's made those hard business decisions and sticks to, sticks to them. I'll listen all day to an Alexa Ralph. Thank you so much and good luck with all your projects. Oh, thanks, Kimberly. I'll see you at the boot camp. Thank you for being a part of the Business of Design community. If you love what you hear on the podcast, take the next step by signing up at businessofdesign.com. As our thank you, you'll gain access to Business of Design's 15-step project management strategy, a free introductory course which includes three Business of Design systems you can implement for immediate results. And when you're ready for success, a Business of Design membership, monthly or annual, will dramatically improve your business and your life. What are you waiting for? Together, we will achieve extraordinary results. Start today.